So given what happened at the prison in Dana Moore in New York, you can't actually be all that surprised by a story like this one. Still, it's hard not to be shocked by the degree of it all. I want to dig deeper now with two people who these story, uh, know these stories inside out. Robin K. Miller worked as a corrections officer at New York City's Rikers Island Complex and has just written a book about her experience, Sex, Drugs, Thugs, The Untold Truth of New York Jail Corruption. It comes out in September. And with us tonight is Patrick Dunleavy, former Deputy Inspector General for the New York State Department of Corrections, as well as a corrections officer himself. Robin, let me start with you. I mean, a lot of what went on in Baltimore, and certainly what we've been learning about Dana Moore, I mean, it surprises people, it shocks people. It doesn't surprise you, though. What was your experiences like? Well, the stuff that's going on in all these jails has been going on for years. It's been going on since probably before I started the job. You were on the job for your entire career, 20 years? Yeah, from 1983, and I retired in 2005. And, and the problems existed, I mean, you, had, you were in a room sometime with 200 inmates. You were the only guard around. Yes. Who do you have more problems with, though? Inmates? Because you, you were saying you had a lot of problems with other corrections the, pro the problems was never the inmates. Once you set your ground rules with inmates, once you demand respect, you give respect, it's like I used to run my house in areas when I was, in, was on Rikers Island, like we was in the Army. Once you show respect, they'll give you the respect. It was my colleagues that gave me such a hard time. Why? why? Just to, because they don't come to work and do what they're supposed to do. Our jobs is care, custody, and control. We're supposed to be worried about the inmates. But instead of a lot of my colleagues worrying about the inmates, they was worried about the officers, the, what they got on, who they dating, who, who's going to give me some, who's not going to give me some. It's like, it's, it's, they took the focus off the job, which was the inmates, mm -hmm. and put it on everyone else. Patrick, the, the relationships between officers and inmates, you say they're actually often dictated by the inmates. What, why is that? Well, because the inmate uh, is able to use different types of techniques to gain kind of a, an intimacy, whether it's an emotional intimacy or a physical one. Uh, it can start off with simply saying, hi, good morning, how are you doing today, Miss Jones? You're looking good. Did you lose weight? Or Officer Smith, would you like a cup of coffee? Uh, stuff like that. It, it starts it off small and that. then man manipulation takes off from there, you're saying? That's correct. It doesn't start off at... Did you find that as well? Because I know uh, I was reading uh, an article you wrote, and, and you would have inmates kind of try to kind of test your boundaries. Did he work Sure, when I was a... <laughs> no, no, I, no, was, uh, sure, Robin. No, no well, they're going to test you. I mean, to me, being in jail is just like being on the street. You have a male, you have a female. They're going to test you. I don't care where you're at. Whether so you, so you, you were saying you had to demand I'm respect? Like, no, well, they, they would test the me. They oh, Miss Miller, you look good today. And I'm like, what? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Uh -huh. You know, you got to put him in check right away. Uh -huh. It's like, oh, yeah, here looks like what? Because if, if you had, if, if it started off small, if, they gave, if you gave him an inch, it would go farther and farther. Oh, well, they would start, it, it was occasions, and Ms. Miller, can you bring me in a sandwich? Really? I'd be like, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> Ms. Miller, can you mail this for me? It, it starts out like that, but what they do is they look for the loneliest and the most isolated. Mm -hmm. and, and I always say... The, the, the reason why I bring up as far as the relationships between officer and officer and officer and inmate and how I'm getting all the respect from the inmate and not getting it from my colleagues because the inmates, they sit back and they watch that. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what happens is, and I know it happens to a lot of females coming on the job, the guys, the, the male officers, they try to rap to you. And, and when they can't get nowhere, then you're a bunch of B-I-T-C-H-E-S's mm -hmm. and stay away from her. And the inmates watch that. They you know, it. plus they probably have problems going on at home, right. so now they come to work, and then once the guy stops speaking to the male officers, then they, oh, the, they tell the female officers, oh, don't speak to her. It's interesting, Patrick, what, what she's saying. I mean, when you were a corrections officer earlier in your career, you actually had an inmate try and give you a $10,000 bribe. Is that right? Yes, I was actually a sergeant. I was a young sergeant, and there was an inmate in prison for murder. And uh, it started off small, and then one day he came to me and offered me a large sum of money if I would help him get out of prison. And uh, it was $10,000. Uh, I came forward. I went to the inspector general's office. They asked me if I would go undercover, wear a wire, meet with stockbrokers and lawyers. And I did, and I accepted uh, thousands of dollars. 
But the most interesting part of that is after the first payment was made, we went up on a wire and listened to the inmate talk to his stockbroker. As soon as the stockbroker conveyed to him that he had given me the money, the first thing the inmate says was, now I own him. Mm, that's and that stuck Ooh. with me for the rest of my career. You don't sell for a price. Yeah. And eventually what we did is we locked up uh, the stockbroker, we locked up the inmate, we locked up other individuals, wow. confiscated and you, money. You and you relate to that, Robin. I mean, you relate to that idea that, that, that they will feel they own you if you give them an inch. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And once they have some dirt on you. That's it. But that's, that's just, you know, human nature when you're dealing with slime. Um, it, I, I look forward to reading your book when it comes out in September. Thank you so much for being with us, and, and Patrick Dunleavy as well. Thank you very and much. And I need them to go to RobinKMiller.com. Okay. To pre-order my book. All right. Remember that, RobinKMiller.com. Uh, all right. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. Thank both. you. Appreciate it.